Hello, everybody. This is Brian Breaker. And I am Bane. And we are from Breaker and Bane's Power Hour, which you can find on www.breakerandbane.com. But right now, you are listening to Two Dudes and an NES. That is correct. Hey, Justin. What's up, man? What sound does like a a Martian bunny make? Hmm. I don't know. Cause like, what does a regular bunny make? I think it's well, a regular bunny kind of sounds like this. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. They what? they just wiggle their nose, right? And they grunt. They grunt. I think they grunt. That's like true. They, they do grunt a little bit. Yeah. Well. Anyway. So, Bucky O'Hare. Yeah, yeah, Bucky O'Hare. Martian bunny. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I'm assuming he's a Martian bunny since he's green. Well. Maybe that's a, a bad assumption on my part. Well, maybe that's a little racist towards Martians because Martians are actually from Mars, right? Oh, wow, well, yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. Bucky's from the Aniverse. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in the Aniverse, right. To save the day from who? None other than the Toad Menace. Right. That I instantly, I I don't know why, but I instantly thought Battletoads. Yeah. They don't look like Battletoads, but for some reason I just Battletoads. Mm hmm. Yeah. And uh, I like their how they march and shoot at you. It's, It's quite fun. Anyway, let's talk about some history. You want to talk about some history? Please. You are about to listen to Justin's historical tidbits and trivia. Enjoy. All right, so Bucky O'Hare was inspired by a comic book that was created in the mid-1980s. The idea was was brought together by a couple guys named Larry Hama and Michael Golden. Larry Hama wrote the storylines to the comics, and Michael Golden actually did the uh, drawing. And it was published by Continuity Comics in the uh, Echo of Future Past series. So, it's interesting because the old comic books, I was looking through some of the old comic books last night, uh, they kind of had this, it's a really different feel than what the, the television show and this video game has. It's almost like a darker feel, which I think is common within, vi- within comic books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you ever watch the cartoon or read the comics? Uh, I did not. I didn't actually know. Uh, I didn't actually s- remember this from my childhood. Um, just, you know, been researching it this week. So I don't remember Bucky O'Hare. Do you? I remember it coming up mm-hmm. on the TV. Right. And, like on Saturday mornings. Mm-hmm. I don't ever re- really remember watching it. I did have a couple of the action figures. Yeah. Well, you know. the, the, uh, the television show didn't last long. It only lasted one season in 1991. And only had 13 episodes. Now, I do like some of the episode names uh, for the television show. The first episode was War of the Warts. Because mm. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they're toads, right? Right. I get it. The second episode was A Fistful of Simoleons. I don't know what that means. Yeah. That's beyond my It's probably knowledge. some kind of scientific name for a toad. Um, the third episode, The Good, The Bad, and The Warty. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's go, let's go down here. Um, and, yeah, well, that's pretty much it. Well, uh, here's another funny episode. Bye Bye Berserker Baboon. I kind of want to watch this television show now. But it was not yeah. it was not renewed for a second season, which is interesting because Konami, who made who published this game for for uh, the NES, created an arcade game as well. Now the arcade game was completely different from the NES game. It was a beat 'em up style, as rather than the the action kind of platformer that uh, the NES version was. And well, of course, any game any game that came out in the '90s on the arcade was a beat 'em. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, which is awesome. But anyway. I, lo- I love beat-em-ups. Right. Anyways. Right. But um, 
it, so it was a beat em up and the plot of the arcade game actually allowed to achieve final victory over the Toads, releasing the energy called the Interplanetary Life Force contained within Complex, spelled with a K. And uh, this was kind of the, the last hurrah for anybody who was a, a fan of this television show because the television show didn't end. Because they didn't end the first season with them actually defeating, you know, destroying Complex. Because I guess they thought they were going to get renewed for a second season, but didn't. So, it was kind of a, a homage to anybody who liked the show. So you could actually complete the Bucky O'Hare series. So anyway, so in 1992, Konami released this Bucky O'Hare video game. Uh, for NES. It was released in North America in January of 1992 and in Japan on January 31st, 1992 and in Europe in February 18th, 1993. Now what I found interesting about this game is it was released in North America pretty much the same time as Japan. And you know, hmm. a lot of the games we look at, Japan gets them first. It's probably because this is a, this was more of a American audience yeah. game. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm not sure how, I mean, Bucky O'Hare may have been in Japan, but it may just it just may not have been really a thing in Japan. Right. It's kind of like them having Dragon Ball Z games over here or something. Yeah. Back in the early days, because we never had any other comic. I don't, know, I don't even know if they're called comics. Right. I don't know. I'm so out of the loop when it comes to Japan. I don't know, but we never really had a lot of this, a lot of Japanese stuff, but we got some of their games. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. They may not have had Bucky O'Hare, but they still got the game eventually. Right. Or at the same time as us. And they were like, "Who is this bunny, and why do I care about him?" <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know the game. Hey, real, real quick, we keep calling him a bunny. Is there a difference between a bunny and a hare? I assume that there is. We probably ought not call yes. him a bunny. I believe there is. Like. A hare is just kind of a different species. Like a bunny is just like, I think what you consider your normal everyday rabbit. Okay, you continue with the history. I want to find out. Okay, yeah, I do know that, and because I used to raise rabbits. Um, when what? I, yeah, I used to have rabbits when I was. A, I think this was like actually before I even knew you. Like this is when oh, okay. I was really young. This was like one of my first like little projects as a child. <laughs> And I used to raise bunnies. A lot of funny stories about the, my experiences with these bunnies. But I do know that the male bunnies, rabbits, are called bucks, and the females are called does. Oh, like deer? Yeah, exactly. Just like deer. Huh. So, bucks and does. Bucks and does. So, Bucky would be a buck. Ah, a buck! Oh Bucky. my goodness! Oh my gosh! We're, 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 we are figuring this game we're blowing out right the, here and now. Blowing our minds, blowing our minds. I'm pretty right sure now. that everybody listening to this podcast, their their head just exploded. Exactly. There we go. All right. So that's pretty much it for us for the history. Uh, there's a lot of history about the the um, comic book series and the television show, but uh, as far as the video game, I think the video game is just kind of one of those games that's inspired by um, the comic book and everything. So, maybe a little way to cash in on it. But I think the game itself was actually pretty well done. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just like a throw together well, game. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it here in a minute, but yeah, I think so too. You want to you hear about the, uh, the hairs? Sure, let's, let's hear it. Okay, you're going to have to Break out your science knowledge, mm -hmm. your biology here for a minute. Okay. Um, hares and jackrabbits are leporids, belonging to the genus Lepus. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. A hare less than one year is called a leveret. <laughs> okay. So basically, they are a they are a genus Lepus of under the family. Leperod Leperodae, which is a rabbit. Okay. So they are rabbits. Mm -hmm. Well, no, let me take it back. They're not rabbits. Rabbits are different. Are different. But hares and rabbits are both Leper Leperodae, Leperidae. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're in the same family, but they're not in the same genus. Huh. 
Now I do know, another little side note about rabbits, that like uh, wild rabbits that like live in the desert, let me make sure I get this right, I think the ones that live in the desert have longer ears because rab how they dissipate heat is via their ears. Hmm. And so I'm pretty sure I'm not getting this mixed up. It's so the longer ears are you'll see like hares that live in the desert have longer ears to compared to the one that live in colder climates will have shorter ears. Mm hmm. That's cool. Yeah. The uh, the hares are also usually pretty big compared to the the others. Yeah. Like just like a, I mean all these different genus there's like ten different genus. Uh, is that the right genuses? Genus? Geni. Geni. Okay. <laughs> there's there's like ten different ones. There's uh -huh. just like the there's just like the uh, there's like I don't even know. There's some weird rabbits in, in Europe that are part of it. There's some just your common garden cute garden rabbit. Right. And then, then there's the hares, which are really big actually. And then you got uh you know, you got some striped rabbits, you got these What was the you remember the jackalope? Yes. From the show the Rabbit with Horns. Yeah, Antlers. Dave yeah. Coo Dave Couillet. <laughs> the Jackalope. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You know what's funny about Buck Yo here is we live in a time of reboots. You know, everything's being rebooted, rebooted, put into the movie theater. And like uh, Transformers um, has been done, I think, enough. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But real quick, is it being rebooted again? Yeah. With Mark Wahlberg instead of, what's his name? Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is this like an origination or what? I don't know. I don't, I don't really care. I no. just... I'm just curious. Funny thing about Transformers is back a few years ago when the original movie came out, the the first Michael Bay movie, not the original, mm -hmm. but um, I remembered as a kid just loving the old school cartoon movie, and I think this guy I worked with, I was talking about it, he's like, well, I have a copy of it on DVD, you can borrow it. So I borrowed it, and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm probably making a few of our listeners mad, but that movie was terrible. Yeah, it's all nostalgia if you're going to mm -hmm. listen to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it w if I remember correctly, which it's been a while since I've seen it, it's really cheesy. Yes. <laughs> like, really, really cheesy. Mm -hmm. Right. The animation, the animation is kind of... The, I mean, everything looks good, but the animation side of it is like they skip frames. It's like all real jittery. Kind of like most cartoons in the 80s. Right. Of course, it was hand-drawn, so that's obviously mm -hmm. difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Bucky O'Hare, did you have this game, or did you go out on a big giant quest? You're about to listen to Michael's quest to find the cart. I, I finally have a cool story. All right. I finally have a cool story. Okay. Uh, so, I was looking around trying to find lots of games, you know, on Craigslist and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I saw where somebody had a lot that had DuckTales, Ooh. Mega Man Mega Man 1, um, I can't remember what else. Uh, I think he had Metal Gear, he had Contra, and then he had a bunch of other games and Bucky O'Hare. Like, the other games are just, you know, worth nothing. And then he had Bucky O'Hare. And I had no idea how much Bucky O'Hare was worth. I just saw Bucky O'Hare and I thought, ah, that's just another one of those stupid, uncommon, mm -hmm. or stupid, common, cheap games. But I saw those other ones and he only wanted like 40 or 50 bucks for it. Right. So I jumped, I jumped on that instantly because, you know, Mega Man 1, Contra. Of course, I already had Contra, but I'd take another copy of it. Yeah. And then they had uh, DuckTales, which I didn't have for some reason. I thought I had that game. But we'll talk about that when we get to DuckTales. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so he had all those games, and then he had Bucky O'Hare, and I got it. And while I was there, you know, 
exchanging money for games, he's like, hey, did you know how much this buck your hair is worth? He said, I'm giving you a great deal. And I was like, no, I, I really don't. I honestly yeah. don't know how much this is worth. And he said, and he almost was like trying to hint at, give me more money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I, I, we already agreed. Yeah. It's 40, $45 or whatever. He said, well, this buck your hair is worth about 50 bucks. Really? Yeah, and I so I came home and looked at it, and it's I don't I don't think it's worth like fifty bucks. I think it may actually be worth like thirty or forty bucks, but it it is it actually is worth some money. Hmm. Did it's they just one of the more uh, rare games? Yeah, I wonder if they just didn't make a lot or not a lot of people bought it or something back then. I think it's one of those things. Uh, what happens a lot of times with these NES games is what makes the price go up is if it's somewhat rare mm-hmm. but also fun. Right. Like, just rare, it's going to be worth more. But just rare and fun, it's like a game people actually want mm-hmm. and rare, then it usually goes up. Like, for for example, Little Samson that everybody always talks about. Yeah. It's worth, it's worth like hundreds of dollars. Uh-huh. That's a really rare game, but it's not just rare, it's also really fun. Right. A- apparently, I, I don't know. I, that may I don't have that game. That may be a hard quest, unless I feel like... Receiving a donation. You know, I <laughs> I'm gonna just skip right over your solicitation there. Um, but it's funny you interest uh, you 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 bought this game with Ducktales because I kind of when I was playing this game this week I thought this game kind of feels a lot like Buck Ducktales in a lot of ways. Bucktails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I <laughs> slipped up there, and um, and also Mega Man. Uh, I know, isn't that weird? It does kind of feel like both those games, and yeah. those are the two games I got with this game. But this game was actually called Konami's Mega Man. Did you know that? Yeah. So, hey, wait, go. I got a theory. Okay. About how this how this guy had Bucky O'Hare. Okay. Since it's so much like Mega Man and Ducktales, I think he, what happened was he had all his games. He didn't have he didn't have Bucky O'Hare, right? Mm-hmm. But he, when he put all his games in storage. They sat there for so long that Mega Man and DuckTales kind of started a relationship. <laughs> they started getting a little frisky while they were sitting there, <laughs> mm-hmm. bored in the in the attic. Right. Next thing you know, Bucky O'Hare. Out pops, out, out pops Bucky O'Hare. Right. Mm-hmm. Probably. Probably how we just talk happened. about Bucky O'Hare? You want to just talk about Bucky O'Hare? All right, let's talk about Bucky O'Hare. This is the game discussion. Okay, so this game is, like you said, it's very much Mega Man mm-hmm. in in style and in, uh, I don't know, not really in story, but gameplay, it's, you know, it's run and gun. It's like a lot of NES games, but what makes it a lot like Mega Man is you, whenever you beat stages, you acquire, well, you acquire crew members is what you do, mm-hmm. but those crew members have special abilities kind of like mega man acquiring special abilities right and you can ch- and you can choose to go to any stage you want at any time mm-hmm. the only caveat there that i found is you, yeah. you can choose to go to any stage at any time except for you have to go to the green planet before you go to the blue planet because you have to have blinkies, blinkies right ability to right. break ice yeah so but other than that, you can go in any order you want. I like that. And you can acquire abilities. Freedom. Yeah. But what's cool about Bucky O'Hare that's different from Mega Man is Mega Man, he acquires these abilities and he changes colors, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Bucky O'Hare, he acquires crew members and you can just change to the other crew members. Right. Which I like. Just, yeah. It's pretty It's new. really cool. Mm-hmm. And they don't just have a new attack. They have like some other special ability, mm-hmm. like yeah. well, when Bucky O'Hare has a super jump, which is his ability. But then when you get another crew member, they have something else. Right. Do you have a list of all the things? I didn't. I forgot um, to make a list. Yeah, I could. Let me just pull it up. So, Bucky O'Hare, he's pretty much just the you know generic no frills kind of guy with his extended jump. That's pretty much it. Uh, Blinky. 
Yeah, his his weapon fires a shot that travels about an inch <laughs> in a downward arc. And it's a terrible it's a terrible shot. Right. Um but it's the only thing that can break through ice and stone blocks in some stages. So and his special uh, it allows him to fly when his charge gauge is still operative. Okay. Dead eye um, Deadeye special is his regular attack. Instead of firing a single shot like Bucky, Deadeye fires three at a time at 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. His special ability is not so great. I'm just reading this guy's opinion, so this is not my <laughs> opinion. Um, by charging up, you can climb up walls and uh, while the gauge counts down. It's needed in some parts of the game. And then Jenny... Uh, acquired after clearing the blue planet, it fires a small blue laser that sells across the screen like Bucky's. Uh, her special ability is a guided shot, charger gauge to fire a power orb. This orb can be directed with the control pad, meaning you do not control Jenny while you are guiding the orb. And the longer you charge, the more powerful the, the power orb. Willie, after clearing the yellow planet, uh, his name is Willie DeWitt. Mm -hmm. And just like Bucky, except instead of super jump, he has the ability to charge up the power of his laser. Uh, he can't move while he is charging up his laser, so uh, its uses are limited. So there you go. Yeah, I really liked Jenny's power, just because mm -hmm. I liked controlling the orb. Control the I, thought orb. That was cool. I thought that was cool. Yeah, a lot of people like Deadeye. That eye seems to be one of the more popular characters. Well, he's a cool character, Deadeye Duck. Right. I like him. Right. But... I just liked I liked Jenny's power mm -hmm. that you had. Right. I really did not. I really, really did not like Bucky's power. Really? Because here's the simple reason is that when I was shooting, I would sometimes jump because I, if you hold it down for just a second too long, instead of tapping it to shoot, because it's mapped for some reason, it's mapped to the same button as shoot mm -hmm. instead of jump. Which mm -hmm. I guess works for the other characters that don't actually jump, like Jenny. Right, right. And, but for Bucky to do the super jump, you have to hold down your shoot button. Mm -hmm. So you hold down. So if you shoot and you accidentally hold it down, then you squat down and start charging <laughs> to jump. But then you jump. Right. It's just right. Um, yeah. I don't know. So I was playing, and let's see. So the you go to the green planet. Mm -hmm. The green planets. Which I, one did you go to first? You go to the green planet too? Yeah, the green. I did too. I don't know why. Just, just well, it's the default. It's the one it goes to. Like when you're oh, choosing the screen, it's just like. So it's kind of like it feels like it's telling you this is the first level. Mm -hmm. So you just go to it. But the green level gotcha. doesn't have as many acts, but it's really hard. I really hate the level where you're jumping from tree to tree. And the water's under you. And apparently, rabbits cannot swim at all. Apparently, they just well, touch water. They just yeah, die. They they just go. To, it looks like he just goes to sleep the second he touches the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't die. Quote unquote. Remember, I'm talking about Maniac Mansion. Yeah, last week you can't talk about death. No, no kill. So um, anyway, and so I just I hated that level because it feels like because some of the trees fall out from under you. Like the, yep. the tree branches, so you have to jump. Some don't, though. It's interesting. It's like, but you don't know which it, ones do and don't. I guess yeah, you, it's pretty. Ra it's pretty random. I guess if you played it enough, you could figure them out. So you have to go fairly quick. And in order to yeah, go, this, the, I, I I honestly found the green level to be pretty easy. But how dare I will you. say, how dare you? I, I know. I will say that this game has a lot. And by a lot, I mean a lot of instant death moments. Mm -hmm. And some of them don't even make any sense. Right. Like falling in the water and falling in pit kind of makes sense because a lot of games do that. Yeah. But there's there's some enemies that you'll fight that some will hit you and you'll lose life, right? Right. And then some will hit you and you'll just die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. I don't understand. Um. And then you've got the uh, toad guys who have their guns. But if they hit you, they have 
you know, it just takes some of your life away. But if you just shoot them once, they just explode. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you've got that disintegr- toad exploding gun. Yeah. Is it exploding or disintegrating? Uh, it's just, just it, it, yeah, it's the toad disintegrating gun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, 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 what it does is it just dries them out really bad. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, that was like an instant hair dryer. Mm-hmm. And you know, toads, they, they gotta stay kind of moist. Right. Yeah. So. Maybe it's, uh, it's a compound W game. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a war yeah. remover game? Yeah. Could it just disintegrates the toad? Could be. Could be. Mm-hmm. Hey, did, I forgot to tell you, um, I have a manual. Oh, sweet. Let's do the manual. Is it good? Okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Did you get the it's... manual from the guy? No, no. I would have loved to have gotten the manual too, but yeah. this manual is actually from the internet. Mm. Okay. www.buckyohairmanual.com. No. Okay. This is actually from neshq.com. All right, let's hear it. Okay. In the darkest part of the universe. Complex, the robotic master of all toads, gave the toad air marshal orders to kidnap as many of the crew members of the righteous indignation as he as they could, and toss them into toad prisons throughout the toad empire, as part of an overall plan to destroy Capty Buck and a Capty 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bleh Captain Bucky O'Hare. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a couple things real quick. Uh, toad prisons, Toad Empire, Toad Air Marshal. It's all about the toads. What about this? Who's controlling who here? Who created Com? It's like Complex is controlling everything. Who control? Who created Complex? I think this is a Skynet situation. Oh really? Hmm. Must be. I don't know. I don't, I'm not. I'm not super hip on my Bucky O'Hare history, but. Yeah, the way well, it re- the way the way it reads, it sounds like somebody built complex, and now complex is giving orders to the toads. Right, so it's like the uh, the architect of the matrix. Yeah, yeah, not really. Okay, continuing on, Dead Eye Duck, Jenny the something, some kind of cat. <laughs> uh, I should I should say I should say that this manual is a little bit faded mm-hmm. in its PDF form, so I'm having trouble reading. Oh, okay. Uh, Jenny the Cat, uh, Blinky, and Earth Boy Willie DeWitt were captured by the Toads. Only Bucky O'Hare escaped by a whisker. A now hair's he whisker. Sca- well, it doesn't say it. Oh, okay. Man, but yeah, a hair's whisker. Now he must scour the universe to rescue his comrades from the Toad menace who has imprisoned them. Bucky knows full well that unless he acts fast, all the wart remover in Sector 37 won't save his crew. <laughs> yeah. Then and only then can Bucky get back to his mission of infiltrating the Toad Magma Tanker and destroy it once and for all. So buck up. Load up your M- Mazer pistol? Hmm. Mazer pistols? That's probably supposed to be laser pistols. I don't know. Mazer pistols. It's a misplan. And let's. And let's croak some toads. Oh, man, that's awesome. Let's croak some toads. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. Yeah, so what was your favorite planet on this game? Uh, I don't know. I thought the green planet was the easiest. <sighs> Dude, you're just going to throw <laughs> that in my face continuously, aren't you? Well, it's the truth. I thought it was the easiest. I really liked it. I guess just because I thought it was so easy. Uh, no, but then I thought uh, I hated the blue planet. Yeah, I thought it was. I I just hate ice levels of all kinds. Yeah, I just don't like sliding. I don't like sliding around. I didn't like the fact that I had to try to break up the blocks to get by. I just I didn't like that mm-hmm. at all. I kind of like the. Uh, I guess it was the red planet, the volcano one, maybe. Right. Yeah, that's a pretty difficult it, level too. I that one that was one that good, one was hard, but I liked. I thought it was fun. Right. It's uh, yeah, it is a lot of fun. It seems like a lot of levels. You know, there's there's in, in video games and especially the old school NES games. It's like there's a lot of crossover as far as 
Um, you know, pretty a lot of games back then had fire levels. A lot of games had ice levels. Mm-hmm. And they uh, had that's pretty much the way it is, yeah. And they had so many similarities too, you know, in them in of itself. But anyway, yeah, I like so I like the red level. I like mm-hmm. the green level. I hated the ice, uh, blue blue level, the ice level. Right. Th- thinking of, I mean, this is they have really imaginative names for these planets too, don't they? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Blue, right. green, <laughs> red. Right. They took their. They took a lot of time. Great. You know, and really, in, in battling the enemies, other than complex, everything's pretty. It's just toad. Toad this, toad yeah. that. It is just toad. But you know, um, they. Uh, I just feel like they had a comic book to go by, right? Mm-hmm. So why couldn't they? take some planet names from the comic book or stuff. Maybe the comic book had names like Blue and Green. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, now, my favorite boss, as far as name-wise, Al Negator. <laughs> I, yeah. just, I just like that name. Al Negator. Al Negator. No, it's... Al Negator, sorry. Yeah, Al-Negator. and this is on your favorite level, the Blue Planet. Uh, yeah. And... and um, you know, it's A L N E G A T O R. Al Negator. Al Negator. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, did you ever make it to the Chartreuse planet? No. No, I didn't. What about the uh, Fuchsia planet? The Fuchsia planet? Yeah, the Fuchsia planet. Uh, no. Okay. I think those are. I think those are secret planets. Well, how do you how do you get there? Uh, well, you take a marker, and uh, while your TV's on, and you're in the planet select screen, you take a chartreuse oh, marker. So this is some elaborate joke of yours. Yeah, it is. Okay. Hey, you had one last week. That's true. Or no, you had one for the bad dudes episode. So I get to I get to have a small one. Well, well I you was had a actually huge thinking, joke. I was actually thinking that there was some kind of secret planet that I did not. That I wasn't aware of. Well, I, yeah, I tried to use ridiculous color names. So that that's kind of a dead would giveaway. <laughs> it would be obvious. Yeah, I like the name Blinky though. As far as characters, it reminds me of Pac-Man. Yeah, especially since he is a one-eyed little robot. Mm-hmm. Blinky. They, yeah, that's cool. They were obsessed with one-eyed characters. You know, dead yeah. eye, blinky one eye. I, th- I feel like blinky's kind of an insult to somebody with one eye as well. Yeah, I think dead eye has two eyes, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think thought dead eye has two. Eyes. Well, he's just dead in one of them. Well, I think de- <sighs> I think what? dead. I think dead eye means like you're a good shot. You know what I mean? You're a dead eye. Well, but no, in the cartoon, one of his eyes, he has a patch. Well, that's, yeah, but he still has two eyes. Why would you wear a patch if you had two good eyes? Well, I didn't, well it may not be a good eye. He may, he may be only be like 10, he may only have like, he didn't have 20-20 vision in the second eye. So he's covering it up. So, he does, so yeah. it's a dead eye. It's, it's just the, it's, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, he's got really good vision in the other one. He doesn't want he doesn't want his left. Right. Say it's his left eye. I don't know which one it is. It's his well, left. Maybe it's, it's left his eye. left. Okay. Yeah. So he's got the left eye covered up because it doesn't have quite as good vision. Right. That way, it doesn't give him some weird perspective thing. You know. Right. Mm, okay. Or it could just be a dead eye. I think it's a dead eye. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't I think, want to go so literal. I'm trying to go, you know, not so literal here, but it probably just gives it. Well, I feel like the name Dead Eye kind of gives it is a, is a dead giveaway if you, if you so. And also, usually you cover them up because of some kind of grotesque abnormality, like it's been poked out or something. Yeah. 
Which is great. Okay. Over. You know, we haven't really talked about this game. I feel like we just beat around this game. We haven't really talked about the meat of it. So in the last five or ten minutes, because we're probably running out of time. Okay. Hit it. Uh, I'm going to go on a quick spout okay. about all the things, about a lot of things about the game itself. Okay? Uh-huh. Okay. I thought the controls, I thought the controls were very tight. Oh, yeah. Minus, minus the accidental jump thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they could have fixed that. I don't know because you know you kind of have to have that charge up, thing, uh, hold the button down to make it work. Uh-huh. But as far as the jumping mechanic, I thought it was very tight. I thought it was nice to play a game like Mega Man where you could shoot up and duck. Mm-hmm. I mean, Mega Man is just you can't do the, either of those things. That's kind of a staple of Mega Man, and, and the Mega Man purists out there are going to be like, well. You don't want to do that, right? Because that's that's not like Mega Man. But right. I I appreciate the fact that I can shoot up and duck under things. Right. Um, the graphics on this game I thought were great. They were really good. I thought the, yeah. I thought I thought the levels were varied. I thought they were they were cool. They were fun. They were nice to look at. The characters, the sprites in the game were actually really big for NES sprites. Normally, the sprites on the NES games are kind of small. Like. Imagine, you know, normally you got a little tiny Mario and little tiny Ninja Gaiden and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then here in this game, you got a huge Bucky O'Hare. I mean, right. He's a, he's a really big character on the screen. And so are the bad, you know, the toads. They're big. Yeah, the toads and some of the, and like the bosses at the end, near the end, they're really, they're kind of big. I mean, and they're, I don't know, they're well animated. I, th- I thought it was cool. Right. I, th- I think that, um, I think the music, I think the music is awesome in this game. We haven't even talked about the music. I think the music is a huge deal. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I think uh, it really matches the game well. By, te- by think... uh, the composer Tomako Sumiyama. Ah, uh, yes. People, you know, people love it when you try to pronounce these names mm-hmm. and you haven't done it in the past couple weeks. I, I did that. It's a bad one. Come on. What do you want? Well, the past couple weeks, let's be honest, have been done by uh, American that's true. Companies like Maniac Mansion with all Lucas Films. There's no, not a better way. That's true. Um, but Tamako Sumiyama, uh, he was a he was a he was a composer for Konami. So, and Konami always spit out good music. Yeah, they really did. I mean, my favorite game uh, as far as music for the Konami game. You want to guess what my favorite? video game as far as music was? The Ninja Turtles? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Ninja Turtles is good. That's some good tunage. Yeah, I could <laughs> listen to that just uh, driving down the road. Oh, if you want, if our listeners are uh, interested, you can go on YouTube and listen to the Bucky O'Hare Escape on piano. Oh, yeah. I would like to. Yeah. I am interested. Yeah, so check that out on YouTube. Somebody just playing <clears throat> Who is it? Can you give them a name? Um, let me look here. Go ahead and talk about the game, and I'll look and see if I can find this. Name. I'm I'm about done. That's just I think it's I just think it's a great game. It's it is kind of difficult. It's not as much as Konami tried to make them a good Mega Man game. It's not Mega Man. Yeah. Mega Man's still still probably a better game in my eyes. Yeah. But uh, this is definitely a game worth having if you could get your hands on it. I w- I don't know if I would pay the the price of admission that it is just because there's a lot of other better games out there mm-hmm. that you can get for your money yeah and since this one's kind of rare and it costs it's kind of expensive I don't know if I would fork over the cash unless you just really want to play it right. but it is it is fun enough to play if you could find it for a decent price yeah um, so this guy is named Juha Mati Poki Pokinen Pokinen I mean, it's a, what what nationality? Is I that? have no idea. Um, but I just listened to a little snippet of this, and I have to say it's pretty awesome. Is it beautiful? It is, and as of uh, I am actually putting it up on our Facebook page right now, so you can Sweet. go check that out. Uh, probably most of our listeners have already checked it out by the time you hear this, but. It's really awesome. So, yep, cool. Okay, 
so the music's got in this game's awesome. The graphics on this game's awesome. The gameplay, for if in my opinion, like you said, the controls are really tight. I thought that the gameplay felt really good. I didn't think that, you know, like I said, there wasn't really any kind of um, hang-ups or areas where I was frustrated with the way um, it played. So, yeah. Cool. So, do you think it's worth the 40 or 50 bucks? I don't know how much uh, it's worth right now. Do you want to take a guess at how much it's worth? I'll look it up real quick. Do you want to guess? Uh, how, how much is... Like, if, it, if you were going to go on Amazon and buy it... How much would I pay for it, or how much do I think no, it's I'm worth? No, I'm saying... How much do you think you would pay for it used on Amazon right now? $35. Nope. 45 dollars Okay. So, if you wanted to buy it used on Amazon right now, this second, mm -hmm. it would be $45. Do you think it's worth $45 to have this game play it? Well, it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to answer that question, because I'm just a broke graduate student now. Uh, well, okay, <laughs> if I had a job and I had money and, you know, I was doing well in life, Yes. As of right now, no. I couldn't, no. I could not. My wife would murder me if I paid $45 for an old school NES game. <laughs> okay, fair enough. What about you? What Do you, do you think it's worth the $45? Uh, no. I don't. Yeah. I, I would, I would think it would be worth less. I don't know. I don't like, to, I don't, I don't even know why I asked this question. I don't like talking about worth of games. If you, <laughs> if you like the game and if you, and if you can find it and it's, you, you see it and it's like, ah, it's whatever. I want this game. Buy it. That's what I say. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to get it in a big box of other games. Mm -hmm. You ripped some guy off. So, I guess I ripped him off. And yeah. he basically told well, you you were ripping him off. <laughs> yeah. He told me I was ripping him off right before I ripped him off. Right. Exactly. Awesome. Okay, but I did it anyways. So, did you create any trophies for this game? You're about to hear some retrofitted trophies. Ah, trophies! I did create some trophies. Okay. Did you? I did. Let Let's alternate. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. Okay, mine is, my first one is Jenny was a friend of mine. Uh huh. And that is uh, Rescue Jenny. Okay, okay. Well, a little uh, reference to the Killers. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The song. I love that song, by the way. Mine is uh, about beating the thing. Now, I understand this is not exactly 100% accurate, but let's just say it this way. Mine is called. Silly kids, video games are for rabbits. And that is beating the game using pretty much only Bucky O'Hare. Um, except for when you have to use Except for when you have this. to use okay. somebody else. Right. So, beat the game nice. only using Bucky O'Hare. Except that's... asterisks, you know, except when you have except, to use. I got you. So that, and that one is... Uh... Silly kids, video games are for rabbits. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Okay, well, I've got another one. It's called uh, Ice Ice Baby. And that mm -hmm. is uh, lose all of your lives on the blue planet. Oh, okay, that's. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, my other one is kind of a, a little challenge. And it's called um, the Dead Eye Challenge, mm -hmm. and it's play and beat the game while wearing a patch over one of your eyes. <laughs> nice, like that. Nice. And it, it needs to be a red patch, like Dead Eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I've got one called uh, By Our Powers Combined, and that is play as each team member at least once. Okay, I like that. Is that it? I don't have any more. Uh, I had one more. If I can think of it. 
Mm. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember what it was called. I remember what you did. I'll just tell you what you did. It's a uh, carry the toad head uh, throughout the level. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. I'm terrible at I'm terrible at these trophies. Yeah. I think people love Although we did, we did, you know. We did pretty good until I ruined us there at the end. We had like two apiece, and then I just pooped the bed. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny. I think people enjoy listening to us crash and burn on these things. I think I think so. I think they enjoy us crashing and burning more than they enjoy uh, actually listening to us talk about mm -hmm. things we know about. Right. So. Anyway, so what about a rating for this game? This is game rating. Well, we could go with the obvious. Type of bunny? We could, a type of bunny. Or we could do something different. Cadbury egg? Okay. I don't know. Flavor of Cadbury egg? How about, uh, how about Easter candy? Your favorite Easter candy. Oh, okay. I like that. Uh, I just showed my hand, though. Well, not, okay. Not your favorite Easter candy. An Easter candy that exemplifies this game. Oh, okay. I'm ready when you are. Okay, you go first. All right. I'm going to go with a peep. Uh-huh. Okay. Rough on the outside because it's a tough game. It's delicious, though. So it's, it's, a, it's a great game. And they're rabbits. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What about the soft, chewy center? Well, I'm talking about now, uh, there is a disclaimer. Now, I'm talking about the peeps that are rabbits. Because peep, the original peeps are chips. Right. I'm talking about the peeps that they make now that are rabbits. Uh -huh. The, the, the okay. chewy center, you, you said? Yeah, what about the chewy center? It just adds the to, marshmallow. Adds to the deliciousness. Oh, okay, it just adds to the deliciousness. Right. Good. So. Anyway. Okay. I'm going to go with the caramel, 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 however you want to pronounce it, filled chocolate bunny. Okay. So the caramel filled chocolate bunny. And I'm going to go with that because this game is... At, when you look at it, you're like, oh, okay, it's just a side-scrolling shooter. So just kind of like when you look at, if you look at a regular, if you look at a chocolate bunny, you're thinking, oh, it's just a hollow chocolate bunny, right? Because mm -hmm. most chocolate bunnies are just hollow, feel, there's nothing inside, they're just a chocolate bunny. You look at this game, you're like, oh, it's just a simple side-scrolling shooter. Yeah, nothing to it, just, you know, whatever. Your run-of-the-mill game, mm -hmm. right? But then you bite in. And, oh, the, your mouth fills with ooey gooey delicious caramel oh, yeah. and you say wait a minute there's so much more to this chocolate bunny than meets the eye mm -hmm. which is what I feel like this game is like because right. it does look kind of simple and run of the mill right but then when you actually get into the meat of the game and play it you're like wow there's there's some depth to it and it's a lot more fun than just watching somebody play it right you know, it's one of those things, it's like DuckTales or, or really Ninja Turtles in this game. It's like, a lot of times, I think it's more of a modern thing. It, it didn't happen as much in the NES days. That when they created a game, it was kind of just, uh, that was based on a television show or something. It was kind of a gimmick game that they just tried to make money on. But, you know, Bucky O'Hare is a really good game. Outside of the fact that, you know, they're just capitalizing on it. A television show, action figure slash comic book. Right. And yeah. it's the same thing, right? Like the DuckTales or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm hmm. All right. How about some uh, listener feedback? Sweet. Let's do it. This is listener feedback. Okay, well, I've got one from this guy. Me? We're gonna. We're gonna. No. No, this guy. You know, you know. He's been he's been uh, writing us in here the okay. last few weeks. Uh -huh. You know this guy. Yeah. He says this is one I've been looking forward to hearing about. I'd like to add it to my collection, but it's a bit on the expensive side. Right. So, yeah. 
it is a bit on the expensive side. But maybe one day you'll just stumble across it, right. and then you'll you can get it. Right. Um. Let's see what else we got here. We got some Facebook stuff. Right. You want me to do that? Sure. And I'll fill in wherever you okay. if you miss any that I deem worthy. So the no swear gamer says. My goodness, someone call a doctor. That has to be the worst case of pink eye I've ever seen. He looks like a strange cross between the Grinch and the Easter Bunny. He does. Yeah, no doubt. this is true. Yeah. Daniel Walker said, uh, This game always had a Mega Man feel, but with a Star Fox-esque story. Strangely addicting, though. I guess it's because I always loved both those games. It does kind of feel like Star Fox. Yeah, it does, kind of. Like, the, it's just the way that you have different characters that are different animals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Jay Jorgensen says, Never played it, but I do like the Mega Man-esque gameplay. It looks like it features. Uh, but I gotta say, that is the m most annoying jump sound in all of Nintendo history, for sure. Hashtag, D-Padded for Life. Nice use of D-Padded for Life, I like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Eric, uh, go ahead. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with the jump noise. You like? The I, jump I didn't, noise? I didn't find it annoying. Right. I, I didn't necessarily like it, but I didn't really find it all that annoying. Yeah. And Eric Purcell says, "The No Swear Gamer, he definitely needs some eye drops or something. That is most definitely <laughs> one wicked case of the pink guy. Somebody farted on his pillow, by the way." Uh, well, that was... <laughs> is, that how the, is that how Bucky got the pillow? Yeah, uh... <laughs> dead I came farted, in and farted, on his farted on his pillow. <laughs> <laughs> farted in his face. Um, that is uh, most definitely one we could guess with Pink Eye. Well, that or he just got out of a three-hour fish concert. I'm not sure what that means. I think that's a drug reference that's not allowed on this show. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be one of those things. He says. All right. You got any more? Uh, yes, I do. I have a little bit more. All right. I've got. Uh, I put up a a questionnaire, like I normally try to do, a mm -hmm. poll, right. if you will. Uh, which crew member was the favorite? And Dead Eye is. He's the he's the favorite by far, with four to one against Jenny. One person liked Jenny. Yeah. I won't reveal who that one person was. In case it's embarrassing. Which I like, Jenny. Yeah. Not embarrassing. But I'm not going to... Better than picking Blinky. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really only, the only feedback I was going to add. Oh, wait. No. We have another iTunes. Ooh. All right. This one comes from Mr. Haddock. All the way and... All the way down there. Wait. Oh, how's it go? Hmm? How's this? Okay, he's in Australia. What? How do you say down? Down under. under. There it is. Yeah. That at down under. Right. So okay. Uh, Mr. Haddock says, "Get on this." Five stars. Great family-friendly show. My son and I look forward to it every week. We play along when we can. Keep up the good work, gentlemen. Sweet. Awesome. Awesome. I love the fact that he's listening with his son. That's good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old his son is. His son may be thirty. I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming he's young. Which is cool. Which means we gotta get, we gotta really rein in this uh, this family friendly stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No more drug references. Eric Purcell, thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know that is funny. I think when my daughter, she's three now, and so I, she's getting kind of close to the age to start playing video games. Uh, she plays games on her tablet now, but you know. Well, Maybe another on her tablet. Yes, she's got her own tablet. God, you guys are, man. Don't be talking about not a, being able to afford hey, a listen, hair when you can buy your daughter her own tablet. Tablets aren't that expensive anymore, especially the kid ones. Yeah. Okay. But um, anyways, but I think I think I'm gonna go make her play like the old school NES before any of the new fancy hey, games. Hey, I tell you what to do. We're, we're going to steal an idea from Nick Stevens. Okay. okay. I, I tell you what to do. For our show, whenever she starts playing, whenever you get her to start playing these NES games, mm -hmm. uh, record it 
and it's kind of like a Ness Dudes Junior, where you just yeah, it's just her playing. You record her playing the game and her reaction to playing the game. Yeah, well, I'll do that's it. What you need I'll to do, do it. it. We'll blow, upload you it to, to YouTube and uh, yeah, put it put it on. We'll put it on our YouTube channel. I'll probably that, do that pretty soon because, like I said, okay. she's getting to that age. She needs she needs to be exposed. Yep. Okay. Right. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Right. I do. We do have a big announcement, though. Okay. You know, we like to. We're only what is this? The twenty twentieth episode or twenty first episode? Something like that. And we've made a we've made a ton of big announcements. We like big announcements, so we're we've got another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have partnered with Underrated Retro, mm-hmm. which is a, another website, another retro website. They do videos. We don't really have time to do a video for every game. Like a really nice, well put together production style video, you know what I mean? Yeah. One that's got got really good video quality. If we did a video, it would be me like setting up the camera in front of my <laughs> thirty inch, you know, tube TV, right? And with my with my with the, with the back of my head in the picture, mm-hmm. it it would be terrible. Okay. Right. But under eight or retro. We partnered with them, and they are going to do a video for every game that we play. And we will post links to those videos, and we will... You can go subscribe to them. It's called They're called Underrated Retro. They're for, they've done a Bucky O'Hare. It is up now. You can go mm-hmm. look at Bucky O'Hare. It's a really good video. It's he just it's basically just a describing the game mm-hmm. and then play, letting you play the game. Or not, you, you can't play the game. Watch you can watch them play them. So it's, it's basically it's just a way for you to see the game that we're talking about, right? And uh, you know, a two dudes dedicated. Uh, well, it's not dedicated because they have it on their site too. But you know what I mean? Right. It's like we approve of these guys doing our game each week, and we we like what they do, and we want you guys to be able to go watch watch the game and know that it's family friendly and know that. It's good. It's going to be a good quality. Right. So if, if each week, if you want to check out the game, they said they would probably have it up by the by the time that we do our well, by the time we release our podcast. Sweet. So we re- we usually release Monday nights or Tuesday nights. Right. So they should have it up every Monday, hopefully, and then you can go check that video. It's a, it'll probably be a, you know two or three minute video, but it'll be worth it. And we'll we'll post it up on our on our on our social media, and we'll post it. Uh, Maybe we'll figure out how to post it on our website too. Yeah. So it's awesome. All right. Speaking of websites, check us out on nesdudes.com. Listen to all the shows there. You can also check out little. We always put up a little post for each podcast and all of our social media things. Download the Two Dudes in a Nest app if you are uh, an Android user, and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And call us. Call us, yeah. Oh no, we did have a call. I'll play it right here. All right, play it. I don't. I don't know. How, I couldn't figure out how to play it live. Sorry, I'm sorry. Well, the call but will take. I'll us play out. it. I'll play it right here. The, we'll let the call take us out, and then it'll be followed by. Uh, it'll be followed by. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hmm. What's going on? But kill, kill some time. Kill some time. Kill some time. Kill some time. Okay. Kill some time. Well, uh, if you like, uh... <laughs> you're doing a great job. <laughs> Keep uh, it up. Keep it up. Uh, you know, I have to say, if you like, if you if you like our show and our family friendly format, and maybe you're just you're wanting a little um, dirtier version of us, you could always check out. Tadpog, we pretty much uh-huh. they do the same thing. Another shout out to Tadpog, sweet. Yeah, they pretty much do the same thing we do, except it's a little no no holds bar, so you don't want to listen to it with your kids, but they're funny. So if you if you like that sort of thing, uh, also you might want to check out a lot of the other shows on the Retro Junkies Network, uh, Genesis Gems. Our nemesis, which I just did, a, I just did a guest spot on our nemesis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Turtle Flakes is always a great show. Of course, if you like Ninja Turtles. Um, okay, all right, I got it. All do right, you want, do you want to you want to keep talking or do you want? No, to please save me. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Be quiet, and I will play. All right. Okay. Did you hear that? I yeah. Sweet. So who was that? Do we know? Just somebody. Uh, we don't know. I have his number. You want me to tell you his number? Yeah, I give his no. phone number out. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I think it was. I think it was Philip Vaughn. I think it was Philip Vaughn. Okay. I think. Philip, you can tell us if you are not. And I'm sorry if that was quiet. Mm-hmm. I really, I just played that out of the computer speaker and, <laughs> and tried to hold my microphone up to it. So it may sound like crap. We'll, we'll try to figure out a better way. But thank you, Philip. That was cool. Awesome. It's cool to actually have a phone call. Mm-hmm. So people call us. And uh, that number, real quick, is 775-7-RETRO-1. All righty. All right. We'll see. You want uh, you want some tunes and some noises and bleeps and whatnot for next week's game? Sounds good to me. All right, here they come. See ya.